Uh, Mr. Thornton, the Science, Space, and Technology Committee was created, I think, in 1958 in direct response to a successful launch by Russia of Sputnik 1. Um, do you think this is a Sputnik 1 moment for China? I do, I, and I'm, I'm optimistic that our nation will respond just as we did during Apollo. Um, I'm optimistic that Artemis will lead us back to the moon. I'm optimistic that science can, can uh, chart the pathway of how we're going to unlock the secrets of the moon. And I'm optimistic that American industry is going to be our best uh, uh, weapon in being very, very fast and agile to set up that infrastructure and capability out there on the surface. So I, I, I think that this could be this, uh, that opportunity. Thank you very much. Dr. Fox, I noticed in your written testimony you didn't mention China. Was there a reason for that? Uh, there was no reason that I didn't know. Um, I was focusing on the CLIPS program and, and all of the goodness um, in the initiative. Okay. So, Mr. Aldemus, you were... Uh, you mentioned in March uh, earnings call, uh, you described the lunar, lunar data uh, network as a national asset. Could you explain, explain that, why it's a national asset? Thank you for the question. Part of um, an award we received was a multi-contract uh, line item award from NASA, the, the Space Communications and Navigation Group, $4.8 billion to establish data relay satellites around the moon, position navigation and timing service around the moon, and then the ground station uh, communications from Earth out to uh, between GEO and cislunar space and from Earth out to 2 million kilometers beyond the moon. So it's a very significant commercial network. The only other network of its kind is the deep space network, and NASA's asked us to be part of a commercial instantiation of a network that could be provided to all uh, uh, missions that travel in that near space region uh, of space. I think that that's a critical piece of infrastructure, communications and navigation. You can see how critical that is around uh, Earth in low Earth orbit. Imagine it being out to the moon. And now other government agencies can use that for space domain awareness and space traffic management, as well as any NASA scientific mission or Artemis mission. So it really is a national asset to put that kind of infrastructure in place as a commercial arm of the NASA's deep space network. Do you, do you see that happening when we reach Mars, of uh, possibly having the same thing there? I absolutely do. I think the CLIPS model lends itself, if we look at that as a blueprint of how you create a, an economy of a celestial body, starting with the moon, that CLIPS model can extend its way all the way out to Mars to replace that aging infrastructure in weather satellites, imagers, and communication satellites out at Mars. And so I think this is just a building block and a stepping stone at the moon that can be extended out into the solar system. Yes, well, okay. Um, you mentioned also po uh, positive navigation timing, PNT. Um, how do you see that as necessary to sus sustain uh, resilient operations? How, how does that fit for lunar missions? Position navigation and timing is essential for navigating um, in and around the moon and landing with precision. Um, right now, every one of us that flies to the moon has to carry their own navigation scheme and equipment and um, algorithms to be able to land with precision accuracy. We want that to be prolific so that anyone can actually land on the moon. And we've had to develop an alternate form of GPS to navigate around the moon with less satellites and still be as capable as GPS. And so the derived technologies that come out of building a network of PNT around the moon are applicable back at Earth also. How does it differ from GPS? We have to do a... Um, uh, a navigation with a constellation of five satellites, uh, not 24 satellites. And so uh, we, we can do that by uh, restricting the, um, the conversion of time between Earth and the Moon and have a time reference base at the Moon that allows us to do precision uh, timing at the Moon that allows for navigation and not convert every time you send a signal back and forth to Earth 
um, from the moon and not have to do that conversion. So it's a new technology that we're working on as part of this contract. MT, moon time? There you go. <laughs> okay, great. Go back.